Welcome to Faith and Freedom. For the next few minutes, we hope to inform, inspire, and encourage you as we discuss the legal victories and challenges to your fundamental freedoms and religious liberties. Faith and Freedom comes to you from Liberty Council, a civil liberties education and legal defense organization. Join us now as Matt Staver, the President and General Counsel of Liberty Council, explains the latest legal issues all across this country in the courtrooms of America. Liberty Council is winning the battle for your constitutional freedoms. Anti-Christian terrorism erupts in Illinois against Christian Liberty Academy. We're going to be talking about it today on Faith and Freedom. I'm Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council. Joining me is Matt Barber, vice president of Liberty Council Action. Matt, just a few days ago, there was some shocking news that came out of Arlington Heights, Illinois, against uh, Christian Liberty Academy, where its windows were smashed by bricks, and people threw bricks and intentionally vandalized this Christian Academy. And now we know who the source is because they've actually taken credit for it by giving specific statements. Tell us about it. Well, they ano- anonymously took credit, and, and police are investigating, trying to identify who the perpetrators are. But we do know at least where the perpetrators are coming from. Uh, they uh, uh, said essentially that, quote, this is just a sin. And here's what's chilling about it. The fact that they would vandalize all of these windows and break into this building, and they tinkered with some um, plumbing and their flooded floors. and So they actually broke into the building. So they, they, they threw bricks uh, through the well. window broke, of this Christian academy. Yeah, and, and they went the inside and, they... and, and messed with plumbing and caused flooding and, mm. and a number of things. Uh, it, that's according to, to what the, the police are saying. They are investigating a number of leads. But they said this, quote, this is just a sample of what we will do if you don't shut down Scott Lively. He was the uh, the pastor, the Christian speaker that was addressing this event. And AFTA, that's Americans for Truth about Homosexuality. This was a, a banquet, a fundraiser for now, AFTA. This particular Christian Liberty Academy uh, actually hosted. Was ju- they were just allowing AFTA. Event. They were hosting the event as a facility. And Scott Lively, who is a pastor, right. um, not from there, but from another part of the country, who is, was one of the speakers. Who is falsely accused of endorsing uh, a, uh, what, a a bill in Africa, a piece of legislation that has very, very strict and stiff penalties for uh, homosexuality up to, and in some cases, including the death penalty, which he has unequivocally opposed and said he's opposed to. He has misportrayed that. They, they, are li- they lie and say that he has supported this bill, which he did not, so that so this violence has occurred now, and the statement continues, quote, these chunks of concrete were thrown through these windows and doors for two reasons, to show that there is a consequence for hatred and homophobia in our community, and to directly cause this event to be shut down. If this event is not shut down, and the homophobic day trainings do not end, the Christian Liberty Academy will continue to be under constant attack. Matt, this is nothing short of domestic terrorism. This now, where is did they pro-gay post this? domestic terrorism. They post did it on a um a website, Indie, Indie News, I believe it is, a, a, a website, a leftist website that allows people to come in and send press releases and post press releases. They then sent through email, anonymous email press releases to the school, to Peter LaBarba with Americans for Truth and a number of other people here. So, you know, we're opposed to, to the idea of hate crimes generally. But certainly as law is currently in play, place here, if hate crimes laws are p- applied, we have a textbook case of Anti, of an anti-Christian hate crime here, a federal offense. We also have civil rights violations. Uh, we also have potentially terrorism here, domestic terrorism. So this is very serious. These pro-homosexual activists, whoever they are, there was a group, the Gay Liberation Network, that was protesting the event that night. They are a group of self-identified Marxist, their sexual and the sexual anarchy group that usually p- with bullhorns and drums and makes a big fuss and protests again based on. Uh, complete lies, uh, Americans for Truth and Christian Liberty Academy. We don't know if there's a connection there. Um, I personally kind of makes you say, hmm, I don't know. But they're they're even claiming now they're denying that uh, they they have anything to do with it or no. So I'll give them the benefit of the doubt at least. But we do know certainly uh, some like-minded individuals uh, have engaged in this act of domestic terrorism. It's really, uh, you know, for most people, it'd be shocking for uh, the fact that we've seen some of these things in other places. It's uh, it's obviously distressing, but it's not shocking because yeah. this is what we've said a long time. This um, 
uh, aggressive homosexual agenda is not about tolerance. It's about dominance. And the more emboldened they get, the more laws that they get, uh, the more uh, vocal they become, the more um, hostile they become, the more aggressive they become, and the more uh, violent in this particular case they Mm -hmm. become. That's what happened in California. When Proposition 8 passed and it was put into the uh, Constitution that marriage is only between a man and a woman, uh, you had violence taking place against the churches. And churches were mailed a white powder to scare them as though it was anthrax or some other kind of uh, yeah. poisonous powder. Uh, those same kinds of things were happening there where people were attacked or they were targeted. Uh, they An were, elderly woman was physically assaulted. A cross that she was carrying was, was uh, stomped upon and crushed. And right. And, uh, a number of instances. And so, yeah, I mean, you, you see this happening more and more. That's the, that's the thing of uh, what's coming. I mean, if you, if you ever go and look at a story uh, and you look at uh, something with regards to marriage or anything uh, along those lines and you look into the blog section of the story, there's so much hate that comes out of those. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, you, you know it's just about ready to be uncorked. And uh, people like this have gone across the, the line and now they've engaged in actual violence. And as you know, Matt, full disclosure here, I'm the chairman of the board for Americans for Truth uh, about homosexuality. Sexuality, and and so I'm you know very familiar with with what's what's going on here. But we it, Americans for Truth, uh, the mischaracterization of that organization, uh, you know they they look for a flashpoint, somebody to vilify and somebody to go after. A, a Americans for Truth is in, as well as Liberty Council for that matter, but is one of those flashpoints. They have been unfairly labeled a hate group by the Southern Poverty Law Center, a hard left uh, wing extremist organization that uses smears in order to uh, label Christian organizations that take a principled stand on the biblical model of sexual morality in love, speak God's truth in love. They label them hate groups. But really, uh, they are fanning the flames of this kind of violence with their rhetoric uh, by labeling uh, organizations a hate group. And they're partly uh, responsible for this indirectly. I'm not going to say they're directly responsible, but... but Well, when you go out and you label somebody a hate group, you think of the KKK. That emboldens these people. Yeah, and, mm-hmm. and then and also uh, it begins, you know, it's the same thing that happened in the Nazi uh, Holocaust where they start to uh, just demonize and stigmatize and, and then at, at some point in time you don't even think someone's human and then you know, you know we, we look at it and our consciences are shocked but if you look at how it ultimately began where they began to uh, just demonize and, and dehumanize them, that's what's happening with this labeling of hate groups where mm-hmm. you're just Categorizing somebody into a hate group category because they take because a, of their a biblical viewpoint, viewpoint on marriage on, or mm-hmm. sexual morality. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's it. And I know uh, the Southern Poverty Law Center is engaging in a national campaign now to go around to different places and organizations and do protest or do um, press conferences to say that the very fact that you're saying individuals can change uh, yeah. and. Uh, do not have to engage in same-sex attractions. They say that that's wrong. It's a it's a national defamation campaign, is what it is. It really and is. That's the, what it really has yeah. become. And I think they've lost their credibility. They really have. They they are more and more being viewed as the hard left They're extremist group. They're becoming a very uh, left extreme. They're marginalizing themselves. Yeah, frankly. it's unfortunate because at some at one point in time they they did uh, good work with mm-hmm. the KKK. They did opposing. That's how they got known. Opposing uh, be, real legitimate hate groups. Yeah, sure. real legitimate mm-hmm. hate groups. and uh, But uh, they've just uh, marginalized themselves and they're just becoming a fringe organization. Well, I've called on the Southern Poverty Law Center, the Human Rights Campaign, a number of other uh, homosexual organizations to publicly condemn this act of domestic, of gay motivated domestic terrorism. So far, crickets. And the mainstream media hasn't really done much with this story either because it doesn't fit the narrative as, as the uh, uh, um, people who embrace embrace a homosexual identity as being the victims. Here Did we have get the, any news at all in Illinois? It got some in the Chicago Tribune, the Sun-Times, the Daily Herald did, you know, page 30, whatever, uh, uh, stories on it. It did get some press uh, to the uh, credit of, of – uh, but it was skewed press, of course, and, and identified, you know, uh, some of it, uh, Americans for Truth, as a Southern Poverty Law Center designated mm-hmm. hate group. So they're buying into that defamation campaign, and that's what why what is intended here. But, you know, as we see this tide of rebellion across the com- uh, country with Occupy Wall Street, with secular socialists and leftists, I think we can expect to see a continued steep incline in, in uh, uh, violence against uh, people who take traditional views. 
We'll give Liberty Council a call at 1-800-671-1776. We have a book here called Sexual Sabotage by Dr. Judith Reisman. Uh, Dr. Reisman is a worldwide renowned expert in Alfred Kinsey and the effects of Kinsey. And all of the roots of what we're seeing today really go back to Kinsey and the Kinsey Institute. Yeah. Sexual Sabotage is a book that uh, will make your blood boil because it will reveal things to you that are shocking, uh, that are clearly uh, documented but something that you may not have even thought about. I would encourage you to get a book, Sexual Sabotage, by going to Liberty Council's website, lc.org, or call us at 1-800-671-1776. You can also go to our Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Liberty Council, and like the fan page and become a fan of Liberty Council. You have been listening to Matt Staver of Liberty Council. Our hope is to encourage and inspire you to stand up for your faith, family, and freedoms. We can accomplish a lot when we work together. Get informed and get involved today. Sign up for our free monthly newsletter, The Liberator. We will send it out to you free of charge. Stay informed with our Liberty Alert email update. Just click on the website at www.lc.org or call us at 1-800-671-1776. Tune in next time to learn more about your rights right here on Faith and Freedom.